the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund expressed her strong support for Sri Lanka's ongoing reform efforts. Havelock City Mall, Colombo's top spot for shopping, dining and entertainment, marked its first anniversary with a range of exciting events and promotions that proved to be a great success. The Colombo Stock Exchange experienced a mixed trend on the second trading day of the week. And starting next month, Microsoft will enable its customers to create autonomous AI agents as part of its ongoing effort to capitalize on the rapid growing technology. From Studio 24, here's Anuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. At the 2024 annual meetings of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank Group in Washington, D.C., IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva met with Sri Lanka's delegation, led by Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe. During a recent meeting, Kristalina Georgieva, Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, expressed her strong support for Sri Lanka's ongoing reform efforts. She commended the government's unwavering commitment to safeguarding the hard-won gains achieved under the IMF supported program, emphasizing the importance of maintaining momentum in these transformative initiatives. Jojiv acknowledged the significant strides Sri Lanka has made in stabilizing its economy through a series of essential reforms. She highlighted that these efforts are crucial not only for immediate recovery, but also for laying the groundwork for sustainable economic growth in the future. The discussions underscore the IMF's continued dedication to assisting Sri Lanka in building a better future for its people, reinforcing the belief that resilient economic policies can lead the lasting improvements in living standards and prosperity. Throughout the meeting, the dialogue focused on specific measures being implemented by the Sri Lankan government and their positive impact on economic stability. The Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting is scheduled to take place from the 24th of October to the 26th of October this year in the vibrant city of Apaya, Samoa. This year's theme, Facing Challenges, Building a Positive Future for the Commonwealth, Sri Lanka will be prominently represented at this significant gathering by senior officials from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, alongside representatives from Sri Lankan High Commission in London. Their participation is crucial as it allows Sri Lanka to engage with fellow Commonwealth leaders and contribute to discussions on pressing global challenges. The Cabinet of the Sri Lanka has formally approved the proposal put forth by Minister of Foreign Affairs, Vichita Herat, to ensure the country's active involvement in Chogam. This decision reflects Sri Lanka's dedication to enhancing its role within the Commonwealth and collaborating with other member states to share insights and develop strategies for sustainable development and cooperation. The outcomes of Chogam will be instrumental in shaping the future policies and initiatives, reinforcing Sri Lanka's commitment to regional and global partnership. Minister Vijita Herat said that Sri Lanka's cabinet has decided to restrict tenders for disposal of scrap metal by state railway and bus companies to local bidders only. Sri Lanka's cabinet made a significant decision to call the international tenders for the sale of scrap metal, aiming to effectively manage the substantial volumes of scrap accumulated by two state transport agencies. This initiative highlights the government's proactive approach to resource management and its commitment to fostering local industries. According to a post-cabinet statement, the two state transport agencies possess large quantities of scrap metal, which presents an opportunity to only generate revenue but also to support local manufacturing sectors that require such materials. Recognizing the potential benefits of prioritizing domestic industries, the cabinet decided to restrict the tender process exclusively to local buyers. This strategic move aligns with the proposal put forth by the Minister of Transport, Ports and Civil Aviation, ensuring that only local companies are permitted to bid on the scrap metal. By doing so, the government aims to stimulate local economic growth, reduce dependence on imported materials and promote sustainability within the country's industrial landscape. Central bank data showed that Sri Lanka's new government has borrowed 172 billion rupees from the domestic market in the first month after taking office. Showing investor confidence, the amount of government securities held by foreigners have increased by 11.7 billion rupees, while the net foreign purchases within the one month period at the Colombo Stock Exchange stood at 98 million rupees. Moreover, the three month Treasury bill yield has fallen by 117 BPS to 9.32%, while the 12 month Treasury bill yield has fallen by 10 BPS to 9.95%. The average weighted prime lending rate by banks has fallen by 22 basis points to 9.10%. 
Meanwhile, Presidential Consultant Professor Fernando has commented that raising funds from domestic financial market to cover ministry expenses and repay maturing treasury bills and bonds is not an unusual activity. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The second trading day of the week continuously saw a mixed trend at the Colombo Stock Exchange. The All Share Price Index recorded a downturn while the S&P SL20 Index maintained its positivity for the second consecutive trading day for the week. To get a summary of today's trading, we connect with Minal Vikramage from Capital Alliance Securities. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a mixed note, brought on by profit-taking among the market participants. The market ended at 12,300.02 points, marking a 9.31 point decrease from the previous session with a turnover of 1.94 billion rupees. The SL20 index, however, experienced an upward movement of 6.46 points to end the day at 3,631 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors, with high turnovers and crossings recorded on John Kiel's Holdings and Hikadu Beach Resorts. The top five gainers for the day were Blue Diamonds Jewelry, Industrial Asphalt, Ryan Finance, Harris Chandler Mills, and Selico Holdings. The top five losers for the day were Hikadu Beach Resorts, Tesla Agro Non Voting, Dialogue Finance, Lanka Aluminium Industries, and Bansai Royal Resorts. The Lanka Rating Agency has assigned a fund rating to Ceylon Money Market Fund. To get the in-depth details of this rating, we now connect Mohamed Imran from the Lanka Rating Agency. Ceylon Money Market Fund has been rated A- minus by Lanka Rating Agency, reflecting a strong creditworthiness. As a rating agency, we provide an independent opinion on the creditworthiness of the fund. The objective of the assessment is based on our methodology, which consist of both qualitative and quantitative analysis. It is important to clarify that we do not promote or endorse any investments. Creditworthiness in context refers to the fund's ability to meet its financial obligations based on our comprehensive analysis that includes portfolio composition, credit risk, management quality, liquidity, market risk, and performance history. The Salon Money Market Fund focuses on short-term investment grade fixed income securities rated triple B minus and above. As of May 2024, the Ceylon Money Market Fund is well diversified with 64% of its assets allocated to non-bank financial institutions, 17% in commercial papers and 13.5% in reverse repos and nearly 5% in treasury bills. The weighted average maturity of 131 days demonstrates the fund's focus on maintaining liquidity while minimizing risk. In the one-year period from June 2023 to May 2024, the fund achieved a 6.1% return outperforming the peers' average of 5.7%. The performance reflects a strong asset management. However, we emphasize that the past performance is not necessarily indicative of the future results. Within more than 75% of the assets invested in A-rated and higher securities, the fund maintain a higher credit quality. However, any significant changes in the asset allocation could affect its credit worthiness. In conclusion, our A- rating signifies the current strength of Ceylon money market fund. Any significant development in portfolio or border market conditions may lead to updated opinion in the future. 
Gold prices surged today, remaining near the record high reached in the previous session. This increase comes amidst a backdrop of significant uncertainties surrounding the upcoming U.S. election. Ongoing tensions in the Middle East as investors seek safe haven assets during turbulent times. Spot gold rose by 0.6%, reaching $2,735.14 per ounce. Meanwhile, U.S. gold futures also saw an upward trend, climbing 0.4% to $2,749 and 30 cents per ounce. The current geopolitical climate combined with economic factors has driven many investors to turn to gold as a reliable store of value. This trend reflects broader market sentiments where gold is often seen as a hedge against inflation and currency fluctuations. Oil prices eased today as the top U.S. diplomat renewed efforts to push for a ceasefire in the Middle East and as slowing demand growth in China, the world's top oil importer, continue to weigh on the market. Brent crude futures for December delivery were down 0.8% at $73.69 a barrel. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures for November delivery were six cents lower at $70.50 a barrel on the contract's last day as the front month. The more actively traded WTI futures for December, which will soon become the front month, fell 0.8% to $69.47 per barrel. Both Brent and WTI settled nearly 2% higher yesterday, recouping some of last week's more than 7% decline, with no let-up of fighting in the Middle East and the market still nervous about Israel's expected retaliation against Iran, potentially leading to a disruption of oil supply. Today, the Sri Lankan rupee has slightly depreciated against the U.S. dollar, as reported by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. But the buying and selling rates for the U.S. dollar have risen. Now, let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is faring against other global currencies. A short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. Havelock City Mall, Colombo's premier destination for shopping, dining and entertainment, celebrated its first day anniversary with a series of successful events and promotions. Since its opening, Havelock City Mall had quickly established itself as a favourite destination for many shoppers. The mall offers a diverse range of experiences including IMAX movies, a wide selection of international brands, a spacious food court and a thrilling wet and wild adventure zone for children. With over 30 plus food and beverage outlets, including pubs and restaurants, Havelock City Mall catered to a wide variety of tastes and preferences. To mark this milestone, the mall hosted engaging activities on the anniversary weekend such as karaoke sessions, a live band performance and the Happiness Kids Workshop which provided creative experiences for children throughout the weekend. Shoppers enjoyed exclusive promotions including a mystery happiness gift card which offered prices for purchases over 5,000 rupees and a flash sale that will run until the 31st of October featuring many discount offers at selected outlets. This extraordinary celebration reaffirmed Havelock City Mall as my happy place where it feels good to shop, dine and create lasting memories. The Sri Lanka Institute of Directors is pleased to announce the appointment of Anitra Pereira as its new Chief Executive Officer, effective September this year. With a distinguished career in education, strategic consulting and leadership, Pereira brings a wealth of experience that will be instrumental in furthering SLID's mission. Anitra is a recognized entrepreneur and education specialist with over 15 years in administration and strategic consultancy. As a former Managing Director and Coordinating Principal, of the Alethea Group of Schools, she spearheaded the digital transformation of the institution, making it Sri Lanka's first smart school in 2018 and setting a benchmark for digital education in the country. In a new role at SLID, Pereira will oversee operations with a focus on enhancing the professionalism and effectiveness of directors across Sri Lanka. 
Lanka Corrugated Industries Limited is embarking on an exciting new phase of growth, marked by a significant upgrade in both capacity and technology. Lanka Corrugated Industries Limited, a BOI approved venture, has been trusted provider of high quality packaging solutions for over two decades. Founded by visionary entrepreneur Sidney Gajanayaka, LCI is now poised to reshape the packaging industry with cutting edge technology sourced from China and Europe. Their new state of the art facility in Millennia Bandaragama spans 10 acres and boasts over 100,000 square feet of operational space. With an advanced corrugator line capable of producing 4,000 metric tons per month, LCI is ready to meet the increasing demands of their clients with enhanced efficiency and precision. In addition, LCI is forging strong partnerships with the leading Indian paper manufacturer to bolster their market position. Guided by their slogan, Energize their customers to deliver a superior product, LCI is committed to empowering local manufacturers with the top-tier packaging solutions that enhance product presentation and operational efficiency. Together, they are setting new standards in the industry and supporting the growth of the country's manufacturing sector. Dialog Axiata PLC announces the launch of the highly anticipated 5G-ready iPhone 16 series, reaffirming its commitment to innovation and delivering cutting-edge technology to the Sri Lankan consumers. The launch event of the iPhone 16 series held yesterday at Dialog Iconic Centre was a celebration of innovation bringing together pre-order customers and esteemed guests. This event highlighted Dialog's commitment to advance in Sri Lanka's tech landscape with Apple's latest offerings. As the first and only network in South Asia to introduce the eSIM quick transfer service, Dialog is enhancing the user experience by enabling Apple users to seamlessly transfer their eSIMs between devices. This pioneering feature simplifies the transition between old and new devices, ensuring data transfer is built convenient and secure. The iPhone 16 series boasts a range of groundbreaking features. Authorized by the Telecommunication Regulatory Commission of Sri Lanka, Dialog is proud to offer the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Plus which are equipped with the all-new 18A18 chip, enhanced camera capabilities, camera control, and innovative action button for quick access to essential functions. This launch marks an exciting milestone for Dialog and its customers, setting the stage for a new era of technological advancement in the country. Viran de Soyosa has been appointed as an independent non-executive director of Navaloka Hospitals PLC. De Soyosa is holding an undergrad degree in finance and accounting from Clarence University USA and also has a Masters of Business Administration from Edith Coven University Australia. He gained experience in both finance and project management at Parker Hunter Finance. De Soyosa moved to Associated Motorways LTE in 2004, taking up positions in automotive marketing, after sales service and brand management. He currently serves as a director at Associated Motors Limited. Tisosa also has experience in tourism and hospitality sector, taking over as director of Arika Villas Dambula, a boutique hotel in Dambula, Sri Lanka. Recently, he was appointed as a chairman of the Ceylon Motor Traders Association, an affiliate of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, which represents the automotive industry in Sri Lanka. Union Bank recently signed a memorandum of understanding with John Keel's CG Auto, the authorised distributor of BYD vehicles in Sri Lanka. This strategic partnership represents a significant milestone in advancing sustainable transportation solutions. In an exciting development, the BYD buyers can now take advantage of flexible financing options through Union Bank leasing. This initiative includes low monthly rental payments and repayment terms extending up to seven years along with a range of valuable benefits designed to enhance the customer experience. BYD, which is recognized as the world's largest electric vehicle manufacturer, is celebrated for its innovative technology and commitment to green initiatives. This collaboration perfectly aligns with the shared vision of both organizations to foster a greener future. Together, they are paving the way for more accessible and environmentally friendly transportation options underscoring their dedication to sustainability and innovation in the automotive industry. Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. More station stocks fell today as uncertainty over interest rates and the U.S. presidential election kept traders largely risk averse, while Chinese markets shifted higher after an interest rate cut. 
Regional markets took a weak lead in from Wall Street as U.S. stocks benchmark retreated from record highs as treasury yields rose and as the earnings season loomed. U.S. stock index futures were mildly negative in the Asian trade. Losses in Japanese shares came even as yen touched its weakest level in nearly three months as the currency was pressured by uncertainty over the Bank of Japan's capacity to raise interest rates further. A weaker yen usually benefits export-oriented Japanese stocks. Japanese general elections are set to take place later this month, while the BOJ is set to meet at the end of this month. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 closed lower retreating from Friday's record high closes and six straight weekly gains as Treasury yields rose and investors vary of high valuations awaited earnings from major companies. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and S&P 500 closed lower on Monday, retreating from Friday's record high closes and six straight weeks of gains. The Dow fell eight-tenths of one percent, while the S&P slipped two-tenths and the Nasdaq rose three-tenths. Rising Treasury yields were a cause for concern among some investors who are also awaiting fresh corporate results. It's a big week for earnings with 114 S&P 500 companies scheduled to report, including Tesla and Coca-Cola. Monday's declines were broad, with almost all 11 major S&P 500 sectors in the red. Though technology stocks got a boost from NVIDIA, as the chip powerhouse touched a fresh record high and closed up 4%. Other stocks on the move included Boeing, which gained 3% after news that workers could vote on a new deal to end a costly five-week strike. And shares of Spirit Airlines skyrocketed 53% after the company reached an agreement to extend a debt refinancing deadline by two months. Microsoft will allow its customers to build autonomous artificial intelligence agents from next month. Its latest push to tap the booming technology amid growing investor scrutiny of its hefty AI investments. Microsoft will allow its customers to build autonomous artificial intelligence agents from next month. It's part of the company's latest push to tap the booming technology amid increasing investor scrutiny of its hefty investments in AI. These so-called autonomous agents are programs that need little human intervention, unlike chatbots. And the company is branding them as apps for an AI-driven world that can handle client queries, identify sales leads and manage inventory. Microsoft said its customers can use program Copilot Studio to create such agents in public preview from November. It's using several AI models developed both in-house and by OpenAI for these agents. Rivals like Salesforce have also touted the potential of such tools, which some analysts say could provide tech giants with an easier path to monetizing the billions of dollars they're pouring into AI. That's as many of them face pressure to show returns on these investments. Some concerns have risen in recent months about the pace of Microsoft's co-pilot adoption. Microsoft shares fell 2.8% in the September quarter, but remain more than 10% higher for the year. That's all from us on the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest updates in the Business Globe. Until then, I'm Sanjay Mudan Nayaka. Thank you for watching and have a good night.